Hey, there he is. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, so it's Friday morning there at the moment? Uh, yeah, 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So it's, I'm, at, I'm at work as well, so that's why I'm wearing all these clothes. And yeah, I'm, I work at a big like farm farm place or whatever. Oh, really? Like a handyman. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Cool. Last day. Last day on work, and then I got three weeks off, so I'm I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so yeah. you're coming down down Australia. Was it June fifteenth? You start? Yeah, we start. We start travel on uh, Tuesday next week. So, oh yeah. wow! And then we have one day. Start with a day off to recoup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. You need it. Yeah, it's a it's like a long long flight. I think it's like if you add it up, it's like around twenty five hours or something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so where are you now in, in Sweden? Uh, I'm down south in uh, like close to Malmö, like okay. uh, half an hour away from Malmö. So yeah, it's hmm. like peak summer. So it's all warm and good as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about the other guys? Are they close to you? Yeah, <clears throat> they all live in Malmö. I live outside on a, like a small, small house on the countryside. Yeah. So, uh, 25 minutes away yeah we're all close together yeah that's good that's what you need yeah yeah otherwise it doesn't work yeah so have you been down to australia before yeah but only as like a vacation been to okay. sydney and perth and ice rock the full tourist <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> straight across yeah yeah <laughs> but it, I, I like i liked it a lot so i'm looking forward to australia again it's going to yeah. be super fun and to bring my guitar and all that. It's even better. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you guys have got like a, I mean, a lot of gigs over here. Like you're doing a lot of, you know, the festivals and some of the other towns where a lot of bands don't really go to as well. Yeah, it's uh, the booking agency is doing a good job for us in Australia. And it's, it's sort of like trying to make all like work together because, you know, as we all know, like a day off is super expensive in the long run. So you need to play all every day. Yeah, yeah. And, that's right. So, almost every day, but we're forced him to do give us some day off as well because we want to yeah. explore Australia. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why not? Yeah, so yeah, got, yeah so June fifteenth, you're in Adelaide, and you go all the way yeah, through Australia, and finish in Perth on the twenty fifth of June. Yeah, and then then we fly home again, and we end up in Mal uh, Copenhagen, the closest airport, at twenty seventh of June. So yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's not, not much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun, but yeah, need, need a few beers when you enter the plane so you fall asleep quickly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you got a couple of connecting flights or is it one long flight? Uh, I think it's one connecting. Yeah. I'm not uh, up to date on that. It's uh, <laughs> Andy. Like the, he's got all the paperwork in order and all the flight uh, information in order so i'm just tagging along <laughs> yeah, yeah that's it that's really cool so so this yeah. tour is it mainly for the uh, the album uh, heavy lies the crown not really because we were booked um uh, 2020 to australia right, yeah. the first but well, something happened in the world and we couldn't go it was it's a weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were supposed to be in australia like mid-march i think 2020 yeah. something like that but then covid started like mid-march in the whole yeah. world i think uh, australia was one of the first countries that shut down completely as well yeah for sure so, couldn't get in yeah. <laughs> but yeah everyone knows the deal yeah oh exactly <laughs> now it's i'm mean, starting to get back into it which is good hopefully that's all behind us yeah. now <laughs> yeah it's, it is it is and we're so happy to be able to tour again because that's that's the meaning of life at least for me yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so with the COVID, I know, like, I've spoke to a few people from Sweden, they said, you know, it wasn't as harsh at the start, I guess, the lockdowns and everything, but then, mm. you know, later on it became a bit more serious. But um, so when did it really, you guys stopped hearing in that, that time in March, do you remember, in 2020? Uh, I mean, they, they didn't close down at all in Sweden. They sort of just, uh, like, made it impossible for people to meet instead, like, uh, restriction you cannot eat more than four people at a restaurant then suddenly yeah. it was only two people and then you couldn't have a like a gathering of more than 500 people and then it went down to 100 people and 20 and then five and then they just like you're not allowed to meet at concerts anymore yeah so 
basically touring stop as well for us in Sweden as like the whole world. It's okay. Thing. Yep. Yeah. But but we didn't close down. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what did you guys do in that time? In the, that year or two years? Let's see. Yeah, uh, trying to uh, sort of get back on life, uh, write songs, uh, keep a positive thinking, like set of mind or whatever you can call it, because we had so much booked and so much to look forward. And then we had the whole album cycle coming in and everything just went upside down and <laughs> had to regroup. So, but it was, it was fun and harsh and not fun at all. Uh, you know, all, all emotions. We're doing like a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So the album "Heavy Lies the Crown" that was released last year, wasn't it? Yeah, in uh, October last year. Yeah. So yeah, of, September October. Written, yeah. yeah, that's right. So was a lot of those songs written during COVID? Yeah, uh, we started writing like riffs together, like pre-COVID, but it was 2020-ish. We started thinking of going into an album creation again to go into a studio and just make up, make up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, it, it was, it's okay because normally I write songs on, on tour because I get inspired of, of roaming around uh, earth, yeah. <laughs> but it was a different, different album. So, but we made it in the end. <laughs> yeah. So with this album, um, did you guys like write it together? At in the studio was it like separate parts no we met in the rehearsal space and just uh, had a like four channel uh, interface and just recorded everything and then hmm. everyone came with ideas for songs and then we processed it and then we uh, either bend it or we used it <laughs> yeah. and then we did that for like a year maybe because we had nothing else to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no it's really cool so, I mean, yeah. yeah at least you could still get together and, and do that and you know yeah, album, which is great. I must say, it's a great album too. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're happy about it. In the end, it was it was a long road and uh, a weird weird one, but with the result is we're super stoked about. Yeah. So it's uh, it's uh, it's a new direction, but still the same sort of Deville sound or whatever you can call it. But it's yeah. got some new stuff. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is different. Like when you you, know, you listen to that whole album as a like a full album. Um, yeah. I mean, you can tell it's you guys, but yeah, it is like varies a little bit in uh, some of the, the songs and it's really cool though. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like progressive or whatever you can call it. Like, uh, yeah. uh, inspired of Mastodon and then inspired of like whatever you can go on the other side of the, of the genre and stuff like that. And then, yeah. And then suddenly it sounds a bit stoner devil as well. And then it doesn't. And then it's some metal and yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to ask you that. Like, I mean, what do what do you guys mainly get categorized as? Because it's it is a bit of everything. <laughs> For me, it's just I tell people I play hard rock, and then yeah. <laughs> it's up to them to categorize it. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't really care if I'm put in that or this category. It's just it's, mm. as long as they like it, I'm happy. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. So, what are your main um, influences for yourself? Uh, I'm from a blues background. I mean, when I was younger, I just played blues, just like the old school guys, and then yep. slowly got into the 70s rock, and then you discovered stoner and hard rock, and you realized those riffs are fucking fun to play. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you got bitten by the stoner bug and hard rock bug and rock and roll bug, and yeah, then you just... I tried, I studied jazz for like a year, but I realized that that wasn't for me. I like to listen to it, but it's not for me when yeah. it comes to playing. I, I did it's I hard. Did, <laughs> yeah, I did exactly the same thing actually. I, I study off this teacher, Bill Tomasini. Yeah. yeah. No, but you, you know, you, when you lose the nerve that rock and roll provides and hard rock provides, and all those yeah. like when you fucking feel the riff instead of just thinking, "Well, oh, I'm gonna make this awesome solo for so everyone can be impressed." Yeah. So yeah. I prefer the nerve nowadays yeah so yeah that's good <laughs> now how about is, yeah. it, is there different tunings on the album like i couldn't figure it out uh we do drop c and then uh drop g but oh, we keep like uh, the drop we just tune the 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 low east the low east ring from c to g when it's uh g time so killing in time uh, is drop g wow so, 
So yeah. it's a bit, it's a bit floppy to like. You yeah. need to be light on your hands because if you just dig in a little bit too much, it's like oh, out of pitch. So, yeah, <laughs> especially right. on the bass, and yeah, it's funny. Yeah, sure. Now, now talking about the bass, so you you started in the band what 2016, didn't you, on bass? Yeah. yeah. So I'm actually playing bass on the latest album. I'm not playing guitar. Oh really? <laughs> so it's the old guitarist that plays guitar. I play a few parts on the album, but. The main guitarists are Andy. They're both on both of the names are Andy. Oh, so wow. yeah, they're playing guitar. So yeah, next uh, album I'll be guitarist. Yeah, uh -uh. that's cool. So when did you? So, yeah. Was it 2022? You swapped that over to guitar? Yeah, uh, after the summer. Well, oh, summer is uh, not summer for you guys now. Like August, end of August, September, August, around there, I started playing guitar. I'm all. I've been a guitarist for my entire life. So yeah. I had a few other bands that broke up and then I had nothing to do. So Andy called me 2016 as a sub on the bass for a tour. And then it was fun because it doesn't matter if you play guitar or bass in the village, it's all about the riffs and there's yeah. not that much solo going on. It's not much of like guitar parts. It's more like together parts. Yeah, yeah. So the bass and guitar are doing the same thing, but with harmony on it. So. Yeah. So I, I got yeah. bitten by it and thought it was super fun to play bass as well. Uh, and then uh, he asked me if I wanted to to join the band, and I said yes. And then as well, we did like over a hundred shows or something like that. So it was fun. Yeah. So have so, you played bass bands before that? Uh, yeah, just like studio bass, laying down some bass tracks, but not 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 live bass. Yeah. So I did the, the the cockiness of a guitarist. Said, "Yeah, bass is fucking easy." And then I realized I need to be uh, on par with the drummer, not not ahead of the drummer. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. That was yeah. that was a good lesson for me to be able to synchronize with the kick bass and snare, and you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. And improve the guitar playing as well. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard a lot yeah. of people. I've spoke to a few people that played in bands, you know, playing bass and then swapped the guitar and said exactly the same thing. Yeah. So you suddenly you're not pushing. You just playing guitar with with the bass and the drums as yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a good experience and I, I don't regret it at all. But now I'm a guitar player, so it's uh, it's fun. Yeah, it's a, it's and a, Eric, fun. Eric, the new bass player, is doing the same thing. He's a guitar player as well. In the, oh, <laughs> so he will probably replace me in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, now going over to some of the songs, I know you mentioned before Killing Time. Uh, yep. now, must mention the, uh, the YouTube clip for that one. Was that a bit of fun? Yeah, it was fun. Uh, yeah. that, that, was, that was when the old guitarist left the band, so he wasn't able to join the, the, the music video. Yeah. So we had no idea what, what, what to do about it. And then we sort of like, let's show the world how a midsummer is celebrated in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we did it in August, not in uh, June. Yeah. Midsummer is like super traditional Swedish thing. You eat herring and then you have a lot of booze, like schnapps, uh, and then you get drunk and then mid, mid like day drinking, hard day drinking that day. <laughs> so we tried to, to to provide that as good as we could. Oh, yeah. Now, so I must ask, is it, was there a lot of acting or was that real? <laughs> No, nah, it was actually just water because <laughs> we all had to drive our cars and stuff like that. So yeah. can't be drunk. <laughs> I wish it was real. <laughs> well, you did a good job. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, now what was that? Um, what was the instrument you're playing in that clip? Nah, it's like a traditional Swedish one. Uh, it's like a, it's a basically a violin, but with drone strings. I can't play it at all. I just made it up <laughs> but you press all those keys instead of pushing down on the on the violin neck and then you got some drone tones going on under underneath as well it's like folk folk, folk instrument in sweden okay oh. yeah it's, it's impossible to play for me at least but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you have to have to look into that one yeah it's it's weird and fun and uh, useless in the genre we play in. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what it's called yeah, uh, is it oh, not harpsichord, something like that? No, I, I can't remember the English. Uh, it's Nickelhalpa in Swedish, but okay. in English, I don't don't yeah. remember the name of it. Sorry. 
should uh, should be prepared for this. No, no problem. <laughs> yeah. I know you were saying before how Andy, like he, he wrote most of the, I uh, recorded most of it. So did yeah. he to go over to you and like show you what was going on? No, I did uh, because we all were so into creating it, the songs together. We all knew oh, yeah. the parts of like, bass and guitar. So it was an easy solution for the band to, for me to just pick up the guitar and then because, yeah, it felt like a natural way to do it. Mm. Because at first I thought I was going to stay on bass, but then I realized, ah, fuck it, I'm going to play guitar. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's and we found Eric. He's a really good lad, so he's a good bassist, and yeah, we're happy about him. So, yep, it went super smooth for us. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's always good to like just get back on track as soon as possible, and then just start playing again. Especially because it was after COVID, so we were super hungry to play for everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. So, what do you yeah. bring over guitar-wise? Have you got a couple of guitars and? Your... Yeah, we got two Enki cases, uh, so one bass, three guitars, one Andy, the singer, is playing a Les Paul custom on this tour because an Explorer won't fit in our Enki cases because it fits two guitars. Yeah. So he brings his own old uh, Les Paul custom, and then I play Telly uh, with P90 pickups, and we got a backup Telly as well. Uh, so okay. it's going to be fun if Andy breaks a string and then he has to play a Telly on stage, and I'm going <laughs> to laugh. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. And how about for effects? What do you guys use? Uh, yeah, we're trying to bring as much as we can, but it's all like the weight of the the luggage is controlled about that. But I think I'm bringing a small pedal board with the essential stuff, yeah, like a distortion pedal, fuzz pedal, delay, reverb, and uh, phaser. Yep. So yeah. Because I'm I'm old school still, I would love to be able to just hang on and go camper because it's easy. But uh, I want a tube amp as 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 little of like options as possible. So you just got like tone tone or maybe bass mid treble volume gain. That's it. And then because then you can if you don't feel it on stage, you can all bring it up a little bit and let the the cabinet take over instead. And then the, giving the sound guy some trouble but still you have a good time on stage as well as long as you don't overdo it because then you're just an asshole <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but i think because i've heard heard bands on our like our size like our club venues that we play on they bring all the camper stuff and all the everything and it's just flat it's just because they forgot about the sound guy they haven't rehearsed with the sound guy at all so it's it's yeah. not the same no it's a good i point. think that's my personal opinion but yeah no no i, I Totally agree. I mean, most of my gigs, I just plug straight through the Marshall, you know, and then just as well yeah. clean, dirty. And then you, all the hair on your arms are just like going that, and it's like, yeah. oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, I've seen a few yeah. bands, recently, like they had um, Queen's Rock, I'm not Queen's Rock, uh, Jeff Tate, he come over solo. Yep. And like, and both his guitars using Kempers, there was no amps on stage. It's like, but like you said, they yeah. really rely on that sound guy to, to make it come. To push it. Yeah, push yeah. it. Mm. And and all the sound guys on clubs and venues, like 400 people to 300 people are so used to not bringing guitar in the speaker system because they've been doing sounds, like doing the whole curve like that yeah, for yeah. 20, 30 years. And suddenly you need to blend in the guitar in the PA and then they they fail at that if they are not prepared, yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, no, definitely. So, oh, but so I wish I could just go, go with the, because then I could have brought all the amplifiers with me down there, but. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. No, I'm sure you're right. As long as you're at your main effects, you can play through any amp and just go for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I bought this uh, super good pedal. Of course, it's Van Halen MXR distortion pedal with what? a gate in it. It's amazing. As long as you get a bit of headroom in the amplifier and it's a tube, it sounds basically the same because it's got all the stuff in it. So that's a good trick if you don't travel with an amplifier. It's Van Halen, so it's so it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know, it's just been a new one being advertised. I'm not sure if it's uh, just like a, a distortion or maybe a delay or something. But yeah, it's a new one going around at the moment. The Van Halen one. Yeah, so. Maybe I, I just went in and tried it. and It's like fuck, I'm, I'm buying this. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. So though. that's 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 my like uh, like always on pedal when I'm not playing my own stuff. Yep. Yeah, no, good. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be um, 
It's going to be great. So hopefully I'll get to see you guys down here in Melbourne. Of course. No, cool. no, thanks again for doing this for us. Um, yeah, no worries. It's, it's all fun. It's fun to talk about music and guitar and traveling and all that. It's, it's life. When I was researching um, like the band before this interview, there's not a lot of interviews yep. you guys on there. No, it's like goes, it comes and goes. It's it's weird, but something. I mean, I mean, normally interviews are kind of, yeah, you just like, yeah, whatever, don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but this is fun when you when you have the video thing and not just a boring phone call or or yeah. or a sheet that you just fill in. It's yeah, it depends on how what it is. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, I like to keep it more of a like a catch up and a chat, you know, like. So like like you do now, it's it's yeah. it's real fun. Feels like I know you, so it's good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully we'll meet up when you come over. I'll yeah, I'll come yeah. and say hello. Yeah, it will be good. Have grab a few beers. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, man. We're good. Nice well, meeting you, and uh, see you next week or yeah. whenever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> see you in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Take care, man. Bye. Bye.